What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today is a styling video. I'm going to be talking about color coordinating for chic outfit styling. Now chic basically just means it means stylish, but another word for it is smart. So the concepts that I'm going to be sharing with you are smart, well thought out outfits. It's not necessarily the end all be all. These are the rules, the hard cut rules, but this is how you can make any outfit look good in terms of the color combinations that you're using. So the first half of this video, I'll be explaining how you can understand colors and how you can coordinate them. In the second part of the video, I will be showing you examples on how I've done that with a particular outfit I evolved in various different ways. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then just keep on watching. Haters imitators and complainers, men they all the same. Hard to win the match when being players of a lawless game. Trying to shake the ground so they can't help except to call. So the first and most important thing about color coordinating that you need to know is the relationships between different colors. So you have your primary colors, tertiary colors, secondary colors. I said that out of order. <laughs> it's primary, secondary, and tertiary. So your primary colors, red, blue, yellow. Your secondary colors, orange, green, purple. And the tertiary colors are the ones in between those. I will say I'm going to be using the terms primary, secondary, and tertiary in a totally different context in this video, so I don't want you to get confused. This first mention of them is just like the color theory concept of colors. And within the color families, you have color schemes that you can choose. You can do complementary color schemes. For example, opposite colors, blue and orange, red and green. You can do analogous color schemes. Those are three colors right next to each other. So for example, that would be red, orange, yellow, or green, blue, purple. That's an analogous color scheme. Now mind you, you can do it that way or you can also include the tertiary colors. So for example, green, blue, green, and blue. And then you can do monochromatic color schemes. So for example, it would be a light pink, a red, and like a dark red, or just all one shade of red. Um, anywhere like a white, gray, black, somewhere on the span of tinted to shaded, light to dark, anywhere in the same span of the same hue is gonna be considered monochromatic. And again, there are more options. There are more than just those three. There's so many different nuances to color theory. So if it's something that interests you, I would encourage you to study it and dig into it. It helped me a lot with my style and I literally took a class on it when I was in college. So from there, you wanna take a formula to apply to your outfit. If you know what colors you're gonna use, this formula is gonna show you exactly how much of each color you need to use and how. I just made it up today. It's called the 321 formula. I know I'm saying I just made it up today, but it's just the fact that I put words to it today. But this is something I've been using and applying mentally for a long time. It's basically just a division of six parts to your outfit in terms of the color. Three parts the primary, two parts the secondary, and one part the tertiary. And like I said, primary, secondary, tertiary, totally different meaning in this context. Primary being like the dominant color, secondary is second, and tertiary is third. So that primary color in your outfit, that's going to be the focal point, maybe. I mean, <laughs> depending on if you have like a brighter color that's tertiary, for example, if you have like a pop of whatever color. But more than anything, this primary color is going to be the color that is noticed by most people. The secondary color is going to be second notice, is kind of carrying the outfit in a sense, and the third color is just like the little accents and I'm saying three colors like a three two one but technically you can do more than that and you can do a different division of it as well but like I said this is just like a foundational rule so spruce it up however you want to I'm gonna show you examples for the three two one in this video now the next thing you really need to understand when it comes to coordinating an outfit for the chic styling and this is like the main part of making it chic is what I call vertical balancing. You wanna balance the distribution of all the colors throughout your outfit. This is why a lot of the time people would just say, match your shirt with your shoes and you're good. Because there's a breaking up of that color by the pair of bottoms that you're wearing. Whatever color bottoms you're wearing usually works with a matching top and shoes, you know? But that's so boring. I'm not just gonna like make it super basic that way. I wanna give you a little bit more detail and more options. The concept though is that you break up the colors and separate them and you have some up top and some on the bottom and some in the middle. The colors that you're using, you can see 
that there's a relationship between every piece in your outfit because of the way that they're showing up. The more colors you use and the more vibrant and specific and, you know, unique these colors are, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. But in this video, I'm actually going to keep it super simple with some neutral colors. And I'm going to go ahead and get into that now. So I've started us off with the base layer outfit. This is just a tan crop tank top, not a tank top, a regular top, and these tan swirly printed jeans. And with that, I have a pair of black sneakers. Now, someone might be like, oh, that's a great outfit. And that's really just because they're decent pieces. You know what I mean? It's a nice color top. Those pants are cool. But the color combination is not really harmonious. The shoes, just they're showing up out of nowhere. Black pair of shoes. There's no relationship to the other pieces. And some might say change the shoe out for like a tan colored shoe, which would work as well. Monochromatic color scheme. But you may just choose to put on something black on the upper part of the body. In this situation, I chose to add a black belt. And instantly the outfit is chic. I mean, there's nothing else you have to do to it for it to be balanced because we have the stacking thing going on. There's the vertical balance of the colors. But let's say that's a little boring for you. Like you're like, that's it. Just top, bottom, shoes, belt. And I get that. I feel the same way, especially in the winter or like, you know, when it's a little bit chilly outside, you don't want to just go out with a t-shirt. And a layer that you can wear, say I put on this jacket, right? It's a leather jacket, cream colored leather jacket. And now suddenly we have three different colors, a primary being that tan for the majority of the outfit. The secondary is now this jacket because it's very big compared to the shoes and belt. It's kind of taking your attention off of the rest of the outfit because it's a lighter color. It's almost separate from the outfit in this sense. So we have a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary, but it's not exactly chic because there's no real balance with how this jacket is kind of blocking off the rest of the outfit. So what could I do to make this outfit chic again? I would add a black bag, black shoulder bag. You see, we're just bringing in a little bit more of the accessories and because it's a shoulder bag, it is breaking up this jacket so that you're not seeing the big block of cream. There's some black breaking it up, but the black is still small. It's just a little bag. So now the black is still the tertiary color, but it's stretched out a little bit more in the outfit, breaking up the jacket and the jacket just gets to be a, more of a pop of color, although it's still a little bit more dominant than the black in this outfit. Now I just wanna fool around with it a little bit more. What if we decided to match the jacket with the bag instead? Let's see this cream bag, see how this would work out. This is something that I feel like a lot of people would choose to do because it literally matches the jacket, right? And I remember wearing this jacket with this bag before. I did not like really how it was working together. And I think the reason is because the way that this bag hangs on me is just like a little bit bulky. It's really close to the jacket. So there's no stretching. There's no vertical balancing added by wearing this bag. Yes, it matches. Yes, it goes together. And depending on what I'm wearing under the jacket and, you know, on the bottom half, it could still work. But when I add the bag with this jacket, it's not adding any more dimension to the look. It's not adding any more vertical balance. It's not really doing anything. Let's say we add a gray bag and a gray hat. Look, now we have a little bit more vertical. And if I use the bag with the straps, right? Because when it's just in your hand, there's a difference between when you're holding it in your hand and when you're wearing the straps, you know, across your body or down your shoulder, it's giving you a little bit more vertical, like I mentioned. This works, it's not 100% the best. And the reason for that is because we have now four colors. It becomes a little bit more tricky. The tan, the black, the gray, and the cream we're not really fully accommodating any of those three colors. I mean, the tan is there, but the other three, they're not really fully being accommodated and they're almost competing with each other. So what happens when I take off this jacket and I put on a black one instead? I've got this black denim jacket, one of my favorite jackets, and now we have a whole completely different look on this outfit. We only have three colors again, black, gray, and tan and now black is the secondary color and gray is the tertiary color but when you put on the bag with the straps you have the extension of the gray in the outfit to where now it's perfectly harmonious there's a balance of the primary tan the secondary black the tertiary gray and they're stretched out and it's just it works it works 
instead of these gray pieces what if i just use the black shoulder bag again here we are and it looks good still it looks good only thing is the bag still doesn't add anything it's not subtracting anything it's just not adding anything and this is fine this is perfectly fine but we also know that the formula is three two one and right now we only have three two either way i want to roll with this flow we're going and we're just going to keep going with the different variations of this outfit to see what works and what doesn't and why so let's say we change out of tan shirt and put on the black shirt that i'm wearing right now because yes i just filmed this <laughs> Suddenly black is the primary color and tan is the secondary color. And we don't have a tertiary color still, but this outfit works. Like I said, it's a matching top with the shoes. Can't really go wrong with that. And when you have pants like this, the vertical is pretty much automatically there. You know, it goes from the ankles to the belly button with these pants. So we're stretching it out. You want to kind of have the vertical go two thirds or so, half at least across your body. And that's what these pants are doing. If I were to wear this outfit with the gray accessories, again, it still looks good. We still have that black as the primary, the tan as the secondary, and the gray comes in as our tertiary, which is just sprinkled on top. It's just an accent. It spices up the look, nothing too much. It works, it's chic. And then what happens if we put the leather jacket on instead of the black jacket with this top? All of a sudden, to me at least, it looks kind of stupid. It's like, okay make up your mind here you got gray you got cream you got black you got tan and i mean there's just not really any harmony there's no really decisiveness with this look now you might think okay these are all neutral colors they always go together because they're all neutral and yeah but like i said there's got to be some kind of thought process some kind of vertical balancing and when you put the gray up top and you put the cream up top it's almost like okay we're not really trying to stretch anything out at all the vertical balance is pretty much ignored aside from like the base layer. You switch the gray accessories out for the black shoulder bag and now we're back with the three, two, one formula. Although I'm not 100% sure which is which. I think that the jacket is kind of taking over the black a little bit since the jacket goes over the shirt. And so that technically does become the secondary. Okay, last and final and final and last outfit combination. Why did I say that twice? Don't know, don't ask. With this one, I want you to tell me, is this chic? You know, I was really looking at it and I'm like, I, I can't tell. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure. We've got the black top, black jacket, black shoes, black belt, tan pants, cream bag. What do we think, y'all? I mean, it's clearly, the bag being the accent, the tertiary. Does it work though? Or is it too random? I'm not really sure. I kind of am leaning towards no, just because of the color relationship, but I'm not 100% sure. I would really like for someone to like give me their opinion on this one because hey, it's a pretty tough call for me. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. I hope this video has been enjoyable and inspiring for you. If you liked it, then like it, and I'll see you next time. Bye!